Hey guys, so I just wanted to make a quick video introducing you to the new temporal stabilizer for cycles that we've got in Turbo Tools 3.0. So if you don't know what a temporal stabilizer is used for, it's basically to get rid of the flicker that a denoiser introduces into animations. And the only way to avoid that flicker is to increase render times quite significantly. Thankfully though, with the new temporal stabilizer, we can get rid of that flicker in as little as half a second of frame dramatically reducing overall render times. So you've probably noticed in the background we've got this incredible scene playing and this was actually provided by a very talented director and 3D artist called Ivo Wegar. It's a 4K render and it took 8 minutes per frame to render using Turbo Render. Just to put that into context, without Turbo Render, Ivo found it was taking between 12 and 40 times longer to get a similar quality result. Now, even though Turbo Tools is dramatically reducing the render time, providing YouTube doesn't try and clean this video up, leaving you wondering what the hell I'm talking about for the next five minutes, we do notice we are still getting flicker when the stabilizer is turned off compared to when it's turned on. For example, in the background buildings there, you can see that's flickering quite bad, whereas now it's completely stable. And that's generally the case throughout the entire scene, particularly in the more difficult to render areas where there was more noise for the denoiser to try and deal with. Incidentally, uh, if anybody's interested in using the Spaceman that's floating around there, uh, it's available from a guy called Albin BKB, the strangest surname I've ever heard, uh, and I'll put a link to that in the description below as well. Okay, so let's move on to actually showing you how you can use the new feature. We're going to use this scene from a 3D artist from California named Alex Weinberg. Now he supplied this scene because in his words, it's absolute hell for any denoiser. So much so in fact, that even the renowned denoiser called Neat Video required it to be rendered to 2,500 samples before even it could do a decent job. And on my GTX 1070, that amount of samples takes approximately 21 minutes per frame. And with a total of 48 frames, that's a massive 17 hours for a measly two second animation. So what we're going to do is look at how we can reduce that 21 minutes per frame all the way down to one minute per frame and surprisingly get better results than the 2500 sample version. Okay, so how do we get this set up? Well, in actual fact, you don't. There's nothing for you to do whatsoever. If we look in the compositor, there's no nodes in here. It's not even turned on. So basically, all you would do is render exactly the same as normal. Now, it's compatible with the inbuilt denoisers, the open image denoiser and optics, but obviously, because you've got Turbo Render included with Turbo Tools, then you're probably going to want to be using this because it will give you much faster renders and it will also provide much better results regarding the texture detail and geometry detail as well. So, we've got this new option now, animation, which when enabled will optimize the sample presets for animations and that will save you the hassle of having to mess about setting up the max and min samples and noise levels. So when combined with the temporal stabilizer, high is going to give you a good result and very high is going to give you generally a production ready result, unless you've got incredibly difficult to render elements in the scene. So in this tutorial, I'm going to select high just so we get enough flicker to demonstrate the effectiveness of the stabilizer. But I will show a comparison between the results we get in this tutorial and very high as well. And then we're going to use the temporal stabilizer afterwards to get rid of that flicker. So let's render this one out. So go to render and then turbo tools render animation. And this is going to start rendering. And then once it's finished rendering, we can have a look at the result. And we can see we've got a really nice result regarding the textures and the, the noise, but we have got quite a bit of flicker particularly on the glass over here and on this brick wall as well. Uh, but generally, there's just quite a lot of flicker in the uh, more difficult to render areas of the scene. So let's have a look at how we can use the new temporal stabilizer feature to get rid of this. So it's really straightforward. All we do is go across to the compositor. And you'll notice we've now got this tree set up for us, which we don't need to worry about. This basically allows you to take advantage of all the other features that come with Turbo Tools. To stabilize it, Incredibly straightforward. All you need to do is literally click one button, publish animation, and make sure you turn on the temporal flicker, obviously. And we'll just change the output as well in Blender's default output panel. 
I'll click on Publish Animation. And you'll notice we get this little node appear that says Publishing. And it's going through, we get a feedback in the image editor, providing we've got it set to render result. And it's going through approximately two frames per second. And there we go. So once it's finished, the node tree is automatically set back to how it was. And we'll do a quick comparison now of the temporalized and the untemporalized version. So just to remind you, this is the untemporalized version, got quite a lot of flicker. And now if we compare this with the temporalized version, and we can see straight away that on the left hand side in particular, where we've got that really violent flicker on the glass, we've got a really nice stabilized result after we've used the stabilizer. So the big question now is, how does the 48 minute render compare with the 17 hour render? So let's take a look. Okay, so first impressions, I think are gonna be quite surprising. We can notice straight away that on the 17 hour render, we've lost a huge amount of definition, particularly on the geometry and the textures. I think to have a closer look at this, we'll pause the video and zoom in on a few areas. Okay, so the first thing I noticed was the, all the details on the glass on the left hand side. You'll notice with Turbo Render, even though it's rendered 20 times faster, because it's got all that additional 3D data to work with, it's managed to maintain all that small detail on the glass, all those fingerprints and smudge marks. Whereas if we look at the 17 hour render, it's completely destroyed them. And again, if we zoom down to the floor, the marble texture, we can see with the turbo render, we've kept all that detail in the texture, same for the wood. Whereas with the 17 hour, we've lost all that detail again for the same reason. So let's move across to some geometry. And if we look at these skateboards, with Turbo Render, we can see all the geometry is incredibly defined and crisp. But if we look at the 17 hour render, again, because it doesn't have that geometry data, it's completely blurred out. And the same, again, if we zoom across to the cactus, we can see that this is actually even worse. So as mentioned earlier, we use the high sample preset in this video. I want to show you the difference between high and very high. So let's take a look at that now. It's quite subtle, but it's definitely noticeable. It did add a little bit of render time. It went from one minute a frame to 2.5 minutes per frame. But compared to the 21 minutes it was taking otherwise, I still think that's a pretty good result. And if you want to produce draft renders without inducing epileptic fits, and then you can select a really low sample preset, such as crap. The stabilizer should then be able to manage to get it to a watchable state. So that's the basic usage. Now let's take a look at the more advanced ways we can use it to get more control when using an existing compositor. So because ease of use was one of the main priorities for this feature, it's exactly the same procedure as last time. All you do is render and choose to render either still image or an animation. And a blue node will appear over the render layer node, and that indicates that Turbo Tools is now rendering. And once it's completed, the only difference you'll see in the node tree is that you're going to get this cache node that is generated, and that's what allows all of these tools that you get with Turbo Tools to be able to function. One other thing as well, it's completely non destructive. So if you want to share this file afterwards with somebody else, all you need to do is click on the render layers node, go into the Turbo Tools panel and just choose Uncache. And that will automatically remove any trace of Turbo Tools. And if you want to get that cache back again, you just choose Refresh All, and that will automatically recreate it, and you'll get the cache version on disk. If you've rendered multiple passes, like we have here, any that are wired up to the rest of the node tree will be stabilized individually, as we can see here. This ensures that upstream nodes, such as glare nodes, for example, don't amplify any flicker further, but instead receive the flicker free data for the best possible result. If you've already cached part of the branch to speed up playback in the compositor, for example here, you can see all the downstream branch during playback doesn't get recalculated, but instead it loads from this cache. This is really handy to use during publishing because it means publishing will be much faster because you won't need to recalculate all the downstream nodes during the publishing process. So in this situation, all you would do is turn on the quick publish option. And then when we publish, the cache node will be stabilized and the downstream nodes will be disabled temporarily for faster publishing. 
One really important feature of the system is that if you're rendering multiple scenes in one compositor, uh, each scene is going to get a cache node by default. This will allow you to play back in real time, allowing you to do real time compositing in the compositor's backdrop. Now, the thing is, you might not want to stabilize all of the cache nodes, you may only want to stabilize one. So, you, what you do is you select the one you want to stabilize and press publish animation. And now you can see that only this one gets the blue publishing icon. Obviously, both cache nodes will still contribute to the final render, but only the one with the blue publishing icon will actually get stabilized. For example, if I now switch to this one and do the same again, you can see now only this node is being stabilized. If we don't select anything, or we select a node that isn't a cache node, for example, the lens distortion or the add node, and publish the animation now, any cache node that was rendered with cycles will be stabilized automatically. So there are a couple of caveats to be aware of. The first one is motion blur must be disabled in the cycles render panel, otherwise cycles can't generate the necessary data for the temporal stabilizer to work. It's not an issue because you can still get motion blur, you just need to do it afterwards in the compositor. And to set that up, go to the layers panel, enable the Z pass, and also enable the vector pass. And these outputs will then appear on the render layers node. And to get the motion blur, all you'll do is shift A and you'll put down a vector blur and you'd wire the vector to the speed, the depth to the Z and the image to the image input. And then you control the amount of blur with the blur value and also the quality with the samples. 32 generally is pretty good, but you can go for 64 if it's a really fast moving object. The second caveat is that stabilization depends on there being sufficient data on surrounding frames. And usually I've found there is, but if on a rare occasion you do find during your test renders that there are certain scene elements that don't stabilize well, what you can do is place those elements on a separate view layer or a separate scene. And then using the selective stabilization we looked at earlier, you can exclude them from the stabilization process for the best result. And that's it. So I hope you find the new feature useful. It should reduce your render times dramatically. And if you've got any questions, uh, drop me an email to the support address and I'll be happy to assist. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you next time and thanks for watching.